Notice from the Foundation Records and Information Security Administration. The information within the containment procedures and description are outdated and has been marked for revision. Maria Jones, Director, RAISA. Item number SCP-307-DE. Object Class Euclid. Continua. Item is drastically affected due to the disappearance of a specific part of the anomaly. Special Containment Procedures SCP-307-DE must be stored within a standardized containment cell, measuring 4 meters by 4 meters by 6 meters, in Site DE-4. An ordinary bed is present in the cell for research purposes. Description: SCP-307-DE designates a seemingly normal closet, consisting of faux ebony with the measurements 1 meter by 1 meter by 2 meters. The object features two doors that grant the user access to the inside, which consists of two compartments. Five shelves for clothing on the left and empty space on the right, except for a clothes rail. The object's anomalous properties only become apparent at night, where people sleeping in the same room as SCP-307-DE will experience severe anxiety related to the contents of SCP-307-DE. Tests with remotely controlled gripper arms have also shown that the object cannot be opened at night. SCP-307-DE can be used like a normal closet from sunrise to sunset. Thus far, no source for the anomalous properties of SCP-307-DE could be ascertained. Longer exposure to the object results in insomnia and ultimately death by heart attack. Discovery: SCP-307-DE was discovered inside of a residence in whose inhabitants complained about nocturnal knocking noises in the child's room. The Rutt family. Furthermore, they missed their 16-year-old son, whom the local authorities were unable to find. Pedestrians who were walking in view of the house at night could see the light flickering from outside and multiple handprints forming onto the window. According to the parents, they were unable to enter the room at night. Eventually, after a civilian reported to have seen a son in his room staring at them through the window with a foreboding grin, Agent Freud visited the family under the false identity of a policeman and placed cameras within the child's room without their knowledge, but they recorded no unusual events the following night. The father ultimately decided to spend the night in the child's room, where he was exposed to the effects of SCP-307-DE. After the father informed Agent Freud about his experience, the latter requested two other agents for securing the object and treating the parents with Class A amnestics. Incident 307-DE-01 During a containment breach of SCP-DE, a large-scale fire occurred that engulfed SCP-307-DE cell, neutralizing it before security personnel could extinguish the flames. An undamaged Ouija board was discovered among the burnt remains, which could point to a spectral entity. On the right, the corpse of a child lay, which subsequent examination revealed to be the Rutt families. Incident 307-DE-02 When Agent Freud was unable to step into his bed in Site DE-4 one day after the aforementioned incident, he wanted to report to his superiors. However, according to his own testimony, he could not open the door. The next day, Agent Freud failed to appear at his workplace, and security personnel discovered him crouching in the fetal position in his bedroom. He recalled the events during a psychological evaluation. Interview of Agent Freud Present Parties Dr. Von Stein Psychologist Agent Freud Hello, Mr. Freud. I'm here to help you work through the events of yesterday. My superiors ordered me to record our conversation. Is that alright with you? I don't care. But let's begin. Could you tell me what happened last night? I… I can try. Some minutes pass before Agent Freud answers. I only wanted to go to bed and sleep, but then this fear suddenly arose within me. All my thoughts were focused on what was under my bed. 
Could you bring yourself to look under the bed? No, I felt almost stunned, like in one of those sleep paralysis, yet I stood upright. Also, everything beneath and around my bed appeared way darker than usual. Then this cursed voice began to speak. Someone talked to you? Yes. At first it was only some childish whimpering, then concrete words. It yelled that I would be guilty and it wanted to go home. Can you make any sense of this? Neither yesterday nor today. I don't like to think about it anyways. The thing seemed to understand that I didn't get it, so it grabbed my wrist and pulled me beneath the bed, after which I couldn't see anything for a while. What did you see afterwards? Walls began to form around me, and I eventually sat inside a bedroom. When I attempted to stand up, I was abruptly pulled back and saw a boy. He carried handcuffs, one side of which was strapped around my neck. Some more minutes later, the door of the room opened and the father of the boy we found in the pile of ash came inside. This bastard won't leave my memory any time soon. Explain bastard. What did he do to you? God forbid, had he done something to me, I wouldn't be ready for this conversation yet. He walked over to the bed of the boy who looked exactly like the one who chained me, lifted him up and walked away. Then, let's call him Ghost, so we can distinguish them. The ghost pulled me along by the chain. We then found ourselves in a larger bathroom, where the father… Uh... You're not obligated to mention it if it is still so difficult for you at the moment. Well, I could only open my eyes again once he had reattached his belt. I see. Do you think that this is the reason why the ghost took such drastic measures for a vendetta? Possibly. Afterward. Agent Freud's bed was burnt, which resulted in the events described occurring at a bed in a room closer to the exit. All furniture was relocated to a fireproof containment cell. Due to a lack of concrete evidence, no legal action could be taken against the parents.